सो लेट एस स्टार्ट लेट स्टार्ट आई गेस वी नो इज दी वेल आई एम डॉक्टर सुशांत सोनी एम बी बी एस मैम सी एम डी पैथोलॉजी रेजिडेंट हिमाट ऑनकोलॉजी एम्स दिल्ली एंड टूडे लेट एस हैव अ लुक एट पैथोलॉजी प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन नाउ बिफोर आई इवन गो फर दो ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन आर द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन विच हैव बीन आस्ड इन योर प्रीवियस एग्जाम सो लेट स्टार्ट विद अवर so starting with our first question metastatic calcification is not seen in you very well know that calcification are of two types that is dystrophic calcification calcifications which they are of two types dystrophic versus metastatic dystrophic calcification it is seen in dead or damaged tissue d for dystrophic d for dead or damaged tissue versus metastatic calcification which is seen in living tissues most common site of metastatic calcification being lungs followed by kidney stomach systemic arteries and pulmonary veins so d for dystrophic t for dead or damaged tissue next serum calcium very very important calcium in dystrophic calcification is normal dekho serum calcium is normal but it goes and gets damaged in gets deposited in damaged tissue versus metastatic calcification where serum calcium is high calcium is high that is why it goes and gets deposited in normal tissue next so what are the examples of dystrophic calcification dystrophic calcification it is seen in rht rheumatic heart disease it is seen in damaged tissue rht atherosclerosis tb lymph node and calcification associated with tumors what is dystrophic calcification associated with tumors called as it is called as semoma bodies you very well know that versus metastatic calcification which is seen when calcium is high associated with hyperparathyroidism if parathyroid hormone is high calcium will be elevated as a result of which it will go and get deposited in normal tissue destruction of bony tissue as is seen in multiple myeloma paget's disease or immobilization vitamin d related disorders like sarcoidosis sarcoidosis is associated with secretion of vitamin d3 vitamin d3 secretion increases calcium leading to metastatic calcification and renal failure secondary to dialysis so now tell me metastatic is not seen in tubercular lymph node it is associated with dystrophic calcification next question next question granular leukocytes are answer which leukocytes which wbcs have granules in them they are dekho lymphocytes are the a granular leukocytes whenever we talk of lymphocytes they do not have granules they are a granular lymphocytes are a granular leukocytes so the granular leukocytes are eosinophils basophils and neutrophils which cell has the maximum number of granules neutrophils neutrophils next question next again i want you to tell me the answer in this answer bachche i'll wait for you guys to comment on this answer a b c d everybody a b c d answer dekho a 5 year old child presented to opd with chloromas what do we mean by chloroma chloromas it is an extra medullary disease chloromas are extra medullary disease there are two main diseases associated with chloromas that is it is associated with cml chronic myeloid leukemia cml as well as aml which aml has the maximum chances of chloromas aml m2 now now if it is a case of cml i'll go for bcr abl mutation analysis if it is a case of aml i'll go for flow cytometry but how will i know whether it is a case of cml chronic myeloid leukemia or aml by peripheral smear so a patient presented to opd with chloromas next investigation is peripheral smear examination on peripheral smear if it is a case of aml i'll go for flow cytometry for cml we'll go for bcr abl mutation analysis next question pretty straight forward and i want 100% right answers this is a straight forward question a patient presented with low grade fever for the last 2 weeks with pulmonary congestion and blood streaked sputum low grade fever sputum weight loss the histopathology shows the presence of lung with kcs with kcs necrosis 
whenever we talk of caseous necrosis which is the first disease that comes to our mind tb caseous necrosis is seen in tb followed by fungal infections which fungal infection histoplasmosis fair enough so caseous necrosis tb what will be the pathology causing such a problem or what will you see microscopically tb which it is type 4 hypersensitivity you very well know that there are four types of hypersensitivity reactions one is asthma allergy two antibody mediated three antigen antibody immune complex four cell mediated or delayed type it is type 4 hypersensitivity that is cell mediated or delayed type next point main cell responsible for development of uh, granuloma in tb so answer is simple it is hypersensitivity with lymphocytes and giant cells what is the name of giant cell seen in tb it shows the presence of langhans giant cell you know that giant cell is a cell with multiple nuclei so langhans giant cell it has multiple nuclei present at the periphery in turn giving it the classical horseshoe shaped appearance in turn giving it the classical horseshoe shaped appearance so i can safely say that the main cell responsible for development of granuloma in tb macrophages main cell macrophages followed by t cells next which are the main cytokines associated in tb the chronic cytokines which are the chronic cytokines that is interleukin 2 12 and interferon gamma so th these are the points which are asked with respect to tuberculosis it was type 4 hypersensitivity and the examiner can very easily give you such an image based question also the minute i see this i very well know that this is hnd hematoxylin and eosin stain showing the presence of giant cells cells with multiple nuclei in which the nuclei are present at periphery langhans giant cell with caseous necrosis this is what caseous necrosis looks like with presence of granuloma on the outside with granuloma granuloma on the outside making this as a case of tuberculosis making this as tb next point next point one of the options in this question was also fibrinoid necrosis very very important let us have a look here only the diseases associated just a sec let me write it on the side diseases associated with fibrinoid necrosis fibrinoid necrosis is seen in aggressive conditions that is benign hypertension or malignant malignant hypertension rht rheumatic heart disease sle systemic lupus erythematosus sle affecting the kidney is called as lupus nephritis sle affecting the heart is called as LSC, Libman sac endocarditis. So both show the presence of fibrinoid necrosis. Malignant hypertension, RHD, SLE. Graft rejection. I took the graft, my body rejected it. Graft rejection. You know that it is of three types. Hyperacute, acute, chronic. Which will be the one with fibrinoid necrosis? The most aggressive one. That is graft rejection, hyperacute type graft rejection hyperacute type and lastly it is also associated with the vasculitis that is pan polyarthritis nodosa pan so these are the diseases with fibrinoid necrosis that was our second option answer in case was simple straightforward a next question next question answer which answer mhc1 is responsible for activation of you very well know that MHC is of three types. One, two, three. Deho, type 1 and type 2 itna nahi pucha jata. What is mainly asked is MHC type 3. But let us quickly make the flow chart of 1 versus 2 also. MHC type 1. MHC is present on which chromosome? Chromosome 6P. P for petite. Short arm of chromosome 6. Type 1 MHC. The genes associated are HLA, ABC. It is rank 1 na? All the single digit genes abc versus msc2 where the genes are double digit dp dq dr where are these genes present on chromosome 6p next mhc1 mhc1 it is present on all nucleated cells 
MHC1, it is present on all nucleated cells and platelets versus MHC2, which is present only on the professional APCs, present on professional antigen presenting cells, that is dendritic cells, macrophages and B cells. And lastly, which T cell is activated? MHC1 activates cytotoxic T cell, that is CD8 positive T cell versus MHC2 which plays a role in activation of CD4 positive T cells. Easy to remember. 8 into 1 is 8, 4 2 is 8. So MHC1 plays a role in activation of cytotoxic T cell, that is CD8 positive T cells. MHC2 helper T cells. Fair enough. This was about MHC1 versus 2. Mainly the questions are asked from MHC3. Very, very important. MHC3, MHC3, which it secretes four things. That is tyrosine hydroxylase. It secretes four things. That is tyrosine hydroxylase. Heat shock protein 70, HSP 70. TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and complement factors BHI and properton. Complement factors BHI and properton. This is about MHC3. So, MHC, major histocompatibility complex, MHC1 cytotoxic T. Again, a very, very commonly asked question. Antibodies associated with SNE. Anti-nuclear antibody, it is a test for SLE. I mean, I need not even say that. When we talk of SLE, the antibodies, which is the most common, most common or the most sensitive antibody, most common or most sensitive is ANA, anti-nuclear antibody. Whereas most specific, they easy to remember. S for specific, S for Smith. It is anti Smith, anti Smith, followed by anti double stranded DNA antibody, followed by anti TS DNA antibody. They most common method, there is no confusion at all. Most common is ANA. Most specific, anti Smith, followed by anti double stranded DNA. Next, drug induced lupus. Drug-induced lupus, antihistone antibody, drug-induced antihistone antibody, and lastly, lastly, neonatal lupus with congenital heart block. Neonatal lupus with congenital heart block. Answer, I know, even if you are not that enthusiastic about writing the answer, but come, think of the answer in your mind and then tell me. Answer, neonatal lupus with congenital heart block, anti rho slash LA. Dekho, easy to remember, na? neonate, hai, he keeps on crying all the time. So, bacha rola paata hai. Rola means he cries. Anti rho slash LA, also called as SSA slash SSP antibodies. These are the antibodies associated with SLA. We have to know them. Antibodies associated. Antibodies associated. So, ANA, SLA. Next question. Next, opsonins, which complement factor is responsible for, as opsonization agent? So, in pathology, two lists which we will never go wrong in. Chemotactic agents, chemotactic agents versus 
opsonization agents very very commonly asked which are the chemotactic agents they are which complement protein c5a c5a others are leukotriene b4 interleukin 1 interleukin 8 and tnf alpha tumor necrosis factor alpha very commonly asked c5a leukotriene b4 interleukin 1 interleukin 8 tnf alpha which is the most potent chemotactic agent leukotriene b4 complement factor which is most potent is c5a overall most potent leukotriene b4 you know that interleukin 1 plays a major role as pyrogen that is it causes fever pyrogen interleukin 1 followed by interleukin 6 you know that versus opsonization agents opsonization agents which are c3b c5a is a chemotactic agent c3b opsonization agent others are others are minnows what is making the bacteria tasty for phagocytosis minnows minnows fc fragment of igg fc fragment fc fragment of igg immunoglobulin g crp c reactive protein crp and fibrinogen so this is about chemotactic agents versus opsonization agents fair enough so the question was which of the following plays a role in attachment of phagocytes to the bacteria that is opsonization is by a c3b agreed agreed next question answer i know ki we have personally seen across years that when the question is put like this many students tend to go wrong and it is a simple straightforward question a patient had stroke and was suffering from paralysis later he died what type of necrosis will be seen in his brain normally when we talk of stroke stroke is occurring because of ischemia which is the most common pattern of necrosis cognitive necrosis due to ischemia cognitive necrosis occurs because of ischemia except brain ischemia of the brain which is associated with liquefactive necrosis so the answer in case in this case was for liquefactive necrosis fat necrosis it will be seen wherever fat is present that is breast i know guys we are most enthusiastic about it and that's the first thing that comes to our mind with fat necrosis breast thighs abdomen breast thighs abdomen buttocks and mesentery these are the sites associated with fat necrosis you also know that it is associated with calcifications due to saponification of fat you know that caseous necrosis on the other hand is seen in tb other than tb tb followed by fungal infections which fungal infection that is histoplasmosis it is associated with tb tb followed by histoplasmosis next question next which of the following is anti-apoptotic again see with respect to pathology i know th especially those who have studied it once with me you have revised it you will find these simple very you will find these questions very simple and straightforward we can divide the genes associated with apoptosis into two categories anti-apoptotic versus pro-apoptotic genes anti-apoptotic versus pro-apoptotic now any gene or any protein with l in it is anti-apoptotic that is bcl2 bcl xl mcl1 flip any protein with l in it is anti-apoptotic except the only exception to this is bcl xs which is pro-apoptotic other pro-apoptotic are bad bax bid bim puma noxa and smack diablo i know pretty sexy name for a protein smack diablo all these are pro-apoptotic in nature all these are pro-apoptotic so which of the following was anti-apoptotic that is bcl2 we simply divided the proteins into anti versus pro-apoptotic fair enough 
Let us have a look at other other options given in the question also. Bx2, B, uh, Bx is of course proapoptotic. Mic, which is very important, very very important. Mic is a proto oncogene. Let us have a look at Mic on the side. Mic is a proto oncogene, which is of three types. Again, commonly पूछा जाता है. Mic proto oncogene. It is of three types. That is C-mic, N-mic, L-mic. C-mic mutations. You very well know that there are two types of genes: tumor suppressor genes, proto oncogenes. Activation of proto oncogene causes cancer. If the proto oncogene is activated, it causes cancer. Suppression of tumor suppressor genes causes cancer. So MIC is of three types: C-mic, N-mic, L-mic. C-mic is associated with Burkitt's lymphoma. C-mic, Burkitt's. N is with which tumor? Neuroblastoma. N, neuroblastoma. L, which organ starts from L? In English, lung. Small cell carcinoma lung. Small cell carcinoma lung. This is with respect to MIC proto-oncogene mutations. Lastly, P53. I need not even say that it is the molecular policeman or the guardian of the genome. Present on chromosome 17 P13. देखो नाम में P आ रहा है ना? P53 will be on P 17 13 17 P13 versus RB gene, governor of the genome, present on chromosome 13 14. That is 13 Q14. An extremely important question, repeatedly asked, important slide. Please have a good look. Next question. Next question. Patient who is a known diabetic on metformin develops anemia, tingling sensation, periphery and demyelination. So even on the basis of clinical history at this point, with anemia, tingling sensation and demyelination, I am thinking of vitamin B12 deficiency. But the minute the examiner says that on peripheral smear there is hypersegmented neutrophil, which is the first feature of megaloblastic anemia on peripheral smear, hypersegmented neutrophil. So it is a case of vitamin B12 deficiency, plain and simple. So let's have a look at our first image. The minute I see this, of course I know that this is peripheral smear. As compared to normal, as compared to normal, the RBCs are not only larger in size, they are also oval in shape. All these, which all these are macro ovalocytes. They are not only large, they are also oval in shape. They are macro ovalocytes, which is the characteristic RBC morphology associated with megaloblastic anemia. First point. Next, when the patient starts developing megaloblastic anemia, the first change will not be a change in the size of the RBC, but it will be the presence of a hypersegmented neutrophil. Look at, look, look at this cell. It is a neutrophil with six lobes. Presence of more than five lobes, more than five lobes in a single neutrophil or, or five lobes or five lobes in 5% neutrophils. More than five lobes in a single neutrophil or five lobes in 5% neutrophils. This is hypersegmented neutrophil hypersegmented neutrophil which is the first feature of megaloblastic anemia this is this is first feature of megaloblastic anemia on peripheral smear hypersegmented neutrophil and lastly have a look at this peripheral smear you again know that you can easily be given one peripheral smear slide also so a simple straightforward image as compared to normal the RBCs are much smaller in size, that is, they are microcytic. Central pallor is more than one third. Normally, RBCs have central one third pallor. Central one third pallor is normal. If the central pallor is more than one third, that is hypochromic. Microcytic, hypochromic RBCs. All these, they are smaller in size, central pallor is more than one third. Most common cause of which is iron deficiency anemia, followed by thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia, and ACD, anemia of chronic disease. 
some people remember it as sita also sita personally i dislike it because most common cause of microcytic hypochromic anemia is iron deficiency anemia ida iron deficiency anemia followed by thalassemia sideroblastic anemia in this city so a female of any age group coming to opd with microcytic hypochromic anemia most common causes are deficiency anemia followed by thalassemia done bache done so on this note needless to say bestest of luck for your exam i know there is a lot of uncertainty at present with respect to the date and so on but irrespective two things are certain things are going to work out much much better than you expect you know more than you think you know firstly secondly keep on studying things are going to be okay and we are in this together so keep on studying keep on revising let's keep our fingers crossed last few weeks and then this study phase is going to be over we are going to have a wonderful seat in pg